Boy, did the Cubbies bullpen get a big boost tonight. Welcome in, everybody, to MLB Whip Around. I'm Amber Theo Harris, alongside our MLB insider, J.P. Morosi, and a man who caught over 1,800 Major League games, A.J. Przinsky. That's good for six all the time. All time, by the way, so congratulations. Yeah, That's I, I, really tough on the knees, I can imagine. No, nah, knees are good. It's <laughs> tougher on the brain, I think, most, <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, we, we can vouch for that. <laughs> All right, tonight's headlines. One of the best closers in baseball is no longer a free agent agreeing to a deal with the Cubs. The Dodgers going for their eighth straight win, but a disturbing trend continued against the Diamondbacks. And through all the injuries, the resilient Astros go for their sixth straight win and a perfect 6-0 record against the Mariners. But the big story of the day, as Ken Rosenthal first reported, the Cubs are in agreement with free agent closer Craig Kimbrell on a three-year, $43 million deal. The 31-year-old will likely spend a few weeks making minor league appearances before he is ready for the bigs. Now, this is clearly a need for the Cubs right now, whose bullpen ranks dead last in the NL and walks per nine and strikeouts to walk ratio. They also are near the bottom of the league in saves and blown saves. So, JP, I know other teams were involved, lots of rumors, but the Cubbies got them. How did this go down? Well, the Twins, Amber, I was told tonight, they were comfortable to go with two years for Kimbrell, but not to three. That's why the Cubs end up winning out. The Phillies, of course, had some interest as well. They've got some bullpen concerns with a number of injured relievers, too. But the reason why this made sense for the Cubs is not just for this year. As you mentioned, the three-year deal getting that additional security for them for the future because Pedro Strope, who just got back from the injured list, he's a free agent after this year, as is Steve Ciszek. This is a multi-year play for a team, AJ, that right now they don't have a single pitcher on their active roster originally drafted and developed by the Cubs. They've had to pull guys from all over the major leagues. This is only the latest addition to their roster. So does this make the final piece of the puzzle for the Cubs complete to pull away in the division? We keep saying the Cubs are the best team in this division. We keep saying they're better than the Brewers. We keep saying they're better than the Cardinals, the Pirates, the Reds. But they're missing something. Will this is this the final piece? I think so. But we keep waiting for them to have that 10 out of 12 winning streak to pull away, 17 out of 20 like the Dodgers have done, the Astros have done, and the Cubs haven't done it. Now, why people will say the pitching. Well, the pitching hasn't been that bad. The starters have been actually pretty good. The bullpen, other than the walks, been pretty good. The offense, pretty good. The only thing that they have is they can't hit with runners in scoring position. And that comes and goes, but for a veteran-laden team like the Cubs, you would expect it to be better. They've had all these streaks of 0 for 25, 0 for 26. And as a veteran team, you expect them to do that. And if they start hitting with runners in scoring position with the rest of their team, I think they are going to run away with this division a little bit because of the questions with the other teams. But is this the final piece? Yeah. It gives a shot in the arm, though, right? It does. You know what it does? It gives the team... That's sitting there. The players are sitting there saying, oh, we're kind of languishing, not really pulling away. Oh, we got Craig Kimball. Every single guy in that clubhouse had a smile on their face when they heard this. Whenever it leaked through the clubhouse in the dugout, I think their game was going on when Rosenthal broke this. But it just gives them a smile and a jolt of adrenaline like, oh, our team is going for it. We won it a couple years ago. We're back and we're going for it. Well, one thing, AJ, they don't have that athleticism that we usually see from a Joe Madden team. Joe loves to have guys, and certainly defensively, they can move around the diamond, yes. But the base running on this team is lacking. One of the worst teams in baseball in terms of second to home, first to third. They don't really do those types of things. That's that's the point. They don't have any speed. Rizzo, I mean, Bryant's not fast. Contreras, Baez can run a little bit, but Hayward's okay. Bodie's not really a burner either. Schwarber's not going anywhere. Right. They don't have the speed, guys, so they can't run. And that's the point. So so when you think about it, if they're not hitting home runs, if they're not going to hit with men in scoring position, and if they're not going to really run the bases that well, they're waiting for the homer. We certainly welcome to baseball in 2019, but that's one of the reasons why, AJ, they haven't really been able to, I think, take the next step of being a really dynamic run-scoring team like you need to have in October. Yeah, the Cubbies came into the night tied with the Brewers for the lead in the National League Central. <laughs>